healthy shelf stable and healthy emergency foods because your life doesn't have to go to crud if you're dealing with an emergency. There are some really good shelf stable foods that you can have. So we're gonna go through a nice little list, but then afterwards, I'm gonna break down things you should avoid. Cause maybe you don't like everything that I'm talking about here on this list, but you still need to know what are the things I absolutely need to stay away from that are in a lot of shelf stable foods. Let's go ahead and let's break this down. Hey, first, make sure you hit that subscribe button and then please do hit that bell icon. We have new health topics coming out every single day. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's jump in. Okay, the first thing that I think you should stock up on in the way of nuts is going to be macadamia nuts. They are very calorically dense. They are a tremendous fatty acid profile. They are very high in what is called omega-7 palmitoleic fats, which do a number of positive things within your body, especially from a fat burning perspective. Not that you're really concerned with, you know, staying super lean when you're dealing with an emergency, but still, it's a great little benefit. Tremendous omega-3 to omega-6 ratio. In the world of nuts, it is one of the best ratios that is out there, meaning you're not going to be loading yourself up with a bunch of inflammatory omega-6s. Also high in oleic acid, which has a number of different attributes, especially when it comes down to the migration of white fat to brown fat, meaning it makes your overall core body temperature a little bit higher, and consequently you burn a little bit more fat. Uh, next up is going to be bone broth. And the reason I say bone broth is because a lot of people will stock up on, well, chicken stock and beef stock and things like that, which is just plain old broth. There's not a lot of nutrient value there. Okay, you've got a lot of minerals and a lot of sodium, but at least with bone broth, you're getting nutrients. You're actually getting some protein, you're getting collagen, and it's much more nutrient dense. It's much more of a food. Okay, so that's the biggest piece there. The collagen is going to be very good for the gut mucosal layer. So a lot of times when you're eating shelf stable foods, you're destroying your gut a little bit. And that's what the whole emphasis here is, gut health. Because if you're gonna be sedentary, you're gonna be on lockdown, down, you want to be paying attention to that, right? Also very satiating. Uh, I did go ahead and put a link down below for Kettle and Fire, which is my favorite bone broth. So special link, special discount down below if you guys do want to stock up on it. Uh, probably the best in my opinion, because it has the apple cider vinegar that helps with absorption and everything and the mineralization within the body. So link down below after you watch this video. Then we have sardines. Not everyone is a big sardine fan, but in the world of canned fish, it makes the cut. Mackerel would be up there too, but mackerel is even more of a, well, developed taste. Okay, get the sardines in water. Why? Because if they're in oil, they run the risk of oxidizing more, but also you maintain a better fatty acid profile. Also very high in vitamin D. This is gonna be super important because if you are in a real emergency setting and you can't get out into the sun, where are you gonna get your vitamin D? And you need it from a bioavailable real form, not from a synthetic form like a supplement. So getting it from a fish source is going to be the best. So canned fish is not bad, and sardines are loaded with that vitamin D. Then we of course have the omega-3 content that we need. Obviously, we wanna keep inflammation at bay. Let's move along. Coconut oil, it's stable. Just make sure that it is extra virgin. Do not, and I repeat, do not get refined coconut oil. Okay, very stable. The reason it's on my list, monolaurin. Okay, it helps support the gut bacteria. It feeds gut bacteria, but more importantly, it staves off bad gram-negative bacteria. We're trying to keep a healthy gut here. Again, you're on lockdown. Take care of your gut. It's going to keep things moving, but also keep you healthy. All right, now let's move on to ghee. Ghee is an animal fat. It's similar to clarified butter, not quite, but it's basically butter that's been reduced down to only having the fat. This is what we want because it's stable, but it's also providing us with what are called short-chain fatty acids, taking care of the gut, from the inside out. Short chain fatty acids quite literally feed the cells of the gut. We don't want our intestinal layer to break down. You're seeing the common theme here. Vinegar. I recommend having vinegar in the mix simply because it's going to affect your overall blood sugar levels. Going to keep things a little bit calmer, less impact on the body, plus there's just a lot of different preserving things you can do with vinegar. You can soak things in vinegar and make them last a longer time. I just think it's universally a good thing to have. Next up is chunk light tuna. Do not do albacore. Why? Albacore is high in mercury. Chunk light has its fair share of mercury too, but not nearly as bad as albacore. It's also a lot cheaper. But one of the big things I want you to be paying attention to is the methionine content. Methionine is an amino acid that contributes to the production of what's called glutathione in the body. Glutathione is the master antioxidant in our body and we need it to defeat, well, reactive oxygen species within the body. But glutathione cannot be synthesized and not be created without methionine. So you wanna be getting any kind of tuna, turkey, quite frankly, shrimp, things like that are high in methionine, but you can get canned tuna very easily. Canned shrimp, mm, I don't know. 
And then we move on to coconut butter. Coconut butter is on my list of high fat superfoods. Okay, it is amazing. It is like peanut butter, but it's made from coconuts. Okay, I recommend going for coconut butter over almond butter, over anything else. A, because it tastes delicious. B, it's got a fair bit of fiber in it compared to almond butter, but it's also very caloric. One tablespoon is gonna get you like 110 calories. If you need to live on this stuff, you could. Plus, you get a fair bit of minerals that come along with coconut. So very, very good there. Plus, of course, like I said, we're getting our fiber. Then we move into flax. I feel like we need a soluble fiber in here. And flax, although it can be phytoestrogenic, it can contribute to too much estrogen, if you're having it in small amounts like you should be, or in a flax meal, it's a perfect thing to take just to keep things moving along, but also to be a soluble fiber that can help contribute to detoxification. Very high in alpha linoleic acid, which is a land source of omega-3s, but fun fact, ALA doesn't really convert to a usable omega-3 unless you combine it with some turmeric, so sprinkle a little turmeric on that. Biltong, which is an air-dried form of jerky, or some kind of jerky stick, okay? Some kind of good quality grass-fed, grass-finished jerky stick. Get your meat in, get your protein in. Biltong is a very clean way, and beef sticks are a very clean way if you get the right ones. Good omega-3 profile, and honestly, just protein. Psyllium, I recommend having some psyllium laying around, simply because, again, fiber. We're trying to keep things moving. So definitely recommend just all you need is a half a tablespoon of that stuff. Then we move down the list to chlorella. You're not going to be able to have your veggies. You're not going to be able to get your chlorophyll. You're not going to be able to get your greens. It's a great way to get some B vitamins in. It's a great way to get that chelating effect. So if you're living on canned tuna because you're just on lockdown and you have chlorella in the mix, you can at least chelate some of the heavy metals that are coming in from the tuna. It's also very convenient. You take tablets or a powder and it's going to at least get you some of the effect of greens and give you some of the minerals that you need and boost your antioxidant activity within your body tremendously. Then pea and hemp protein. Two reasons why. Pea and hemp protein, of course, are going to give you protein. That's great. But more importantly, in this particular case, we're looking at gut health. Pea protein is somewhat to a degree a resistant starch. So the resistant starches that are in pea can make it so that your gut bacteria has no choice but to grow. Resistant starches don't break down. They don't enzymatically break down in the gut. So what that means is we have to send bacteria to digest it and it creates more bacteria and ultimately creates short chain fatty acids that feed the gut. So pea protein and hemp protein are very good not only for protein, but for gut health. So I recommend that they're there instead of whey in this case. Electrolytes, just keep some magnesium, keep some potassium on hand because it's gonna be very easy to become deficient in those minerals. So especially if you're hydrating properly, like you should. Then we move into dark chocolate. Okay, dark chocolate, just don't eat a bunch of it because you're gonna just go through it if it tastes good. Get the unsweetened baking dark chocolate, high in steric acids, which is a specific kind of saturated fat that has a lot of positive attributes, can actually help lower LDL cholesterol. And it also has what are called endocannabinoids, okay, andandamine, which is gonna, quite frankly, just give you a little boost of spirits in a time that might be a little stressful. Coconut milk. I am usually not the biggest fan of the pantry type of almond milks and coconut milks and things like that because they usually have some preservatives in them. I will say coconut milk is more stable than almond milk in a pantry style, okay? In the refrigerated section, it's a whole different ball game, but you're not gonna have a refrigerator in this case. We're talking shelf stable, okay? Very high in the electrolytes. That's why coconut water is so good. Now, coconut milk still has some of the coconut water in it, so you get a little bit of that depending on what brand you buy. Very stable, much more stable than almond milk. If you're a cheese goer, get some cheese in wax. It can last up to 25 years. I have yet to see a goat cheese in wax, but if you come across one, goat cheese is gonna be the best cheese you could get. And then veggies, fermented canned veggies, fermented canned asparagus, green beans. The fermentation process is good and it will preserve them. Do not get just the straight up canned veggies, get the fermented ones. So you'll see, like, like I said, fermented asparagus, stuff like that. Also go for lots of sauerkraut, lots of kimchi. And some of them are still shelf stable after you open them, okay? This is gonna be, once again, a probiotic effect on the gut. Everything we're trying to do is take care of the gut. If we take care of the gut, we can get out of this unscathed, right? Now let's go over to this avoid list because now you know what I would recommend in my top foods. Hydrogenated oils. You need to be very, very careful with that. If it says hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated, do not get it, period, unless it's like the only thing left at the store, okay? What that means is they add an extra hydrogen molecule to ultimately make it uh, a saturated fat when it's not really a saturated fat. Totally chemically adulterated. It takes 51 days to break down half of a CIS bond with a hydrogenated oil. The bad oils overall that you should avoid are the very unstable oils that are just 
pure polyunsaturated fatty acids that are just going to wreak havoc on your body. Grapeseed oil is the worst. Corn oil is terrible. Canola, soy, run away fast. Refined coconut oil, like I talked about, no go. Okay, stripped of everything. I wanted to make a note on high oleic oils. High oleic oils are where they essentially make it a monounsaturated fat to make it a little more shelf stable by concentrating the oleic acid compound. Studies are showing that it doesn't make it much better. So we still fall into the same category. So what you will typically see with high oleic oils is you'll see it in high oleic soybean, high oleic sunflower, and high oleic canola. Okay, order of preference in which I'd like you to follow. Best, high oleic sunflower. Medium, high oleic canola. Worst, high oleic soy. Okay, that's the best order. High oleic sunflower if possible. Yeast extract, it's just MSG and it's not good. You don't want to be loading yourself with excitotoxins when you're already just in a stressful situation. Benzoates, which convert into benzene. So anything where it's like sodium benzoate, potassium benzoate, avoid. Once benzoates react with vitamin C in your body, which does happen quick, converts into benzene, which is toxic and has been noted as a carcinogen. So be very careful with that. BHA. BHA is a synthetic antioxidant. So basically what they've done is that, well, let's make something that prevents oxidative damage to make it shelf stable. So they created this synthetic antioxidant that goes in there to react with, well, reactive oxygen species and things like that. Well, when it's in our body, it reacts with the wrong things and it could be a potential carcinogen, but it's also just terrible for you and doesn't really metabolize. Then high fructose corn syrup, you're gonna see that, and if it's anywhere on that label, run away. Then we have soluble corn fiber, usually used in a lot of keto products these days. Be careful, it's still derived from corn syrup. So it's still, it doesn't digest, it's gonna give you gastric distress. You don't wanna be dealing with that when you're in a bunker or trying to hold out, right? Okay, the dyes I want you to be careful of. Yellow number five, blues number one and two, red number three, Yellow number six, and the sneaky one, natural green coloring, which is actually one of the worst ones. Just because it's natural, that's a very loose term, doesn't mean that it's safe. So here you have it. Make sure you're keeping it locked in daily for every one of my videos. See you tomorrow.